let us understand the first two physical quantities of this chapter that is nothing but distance and displacement. So first of all what we should understand is that distance and displacement both are denoted by small letter s. Now let us understand distance and displacement with the help of an example. So here we have a circular track with us and we have trained right now at point A. Now this train wants to move from point A to point B, right? So what or which path will this train actually cover? This train will actually move like this, right? And this is the actual path which is travelled by this object, right? So this is the actual path travelled by the object and this particular thing, this particular path is called as the distance and this statement has to come in the definition. So let's see what the definition exactly is. The length of the actual path travelled by an object in motion while going from one point to another is called as distance. So this is the definition of distance. Now let us understand displacement with the same example. So here it started from point A, reached point B and it took this path, right? But what is the shortest path between A and B? It is nothing but a straight line, right? So this straight line is nothing but the shortest distance and this is what is called as displacement. So the minimum or the shortest distance between the starting and the finishing points is what is called as displacement. So this and this is the definition of distance and displacement, right? So these were the first points. Now let's move on to the second point. It says that this is a scalar quantity and this is a vector quantity. Now scalar quantity means it requires only magnitude for its description and here it is a vector quantity which means it requires magnitude as well as direction. So distance a scalar quantity, displacement a vector quantity. Now the third point. It is either equal to or greater than the displacement and if you see over here it says it is either equal to or less than the displacement. Now what exactly is this? Now we saw the example of the train and we know that the distance was something like this, right? And displacement was like this. If the train would have actually travelled like this, the distance and the displacement would have remained the same. Right? That means the distance can be either equal to or greater than the displacement. Right? And one thing what we should understand is that distance travelled is always positive whereas displacement may be positive, negative or zero as it is a vector quantity and vector quantities have directions. So